The whole purpose of this weekly read and vlog was to start my March TBR early because I wasn't feeling the last couple of books of February and that's really backfired on me. Basically a book that feels like it's just been written for me because it's... and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly read and vlog and this week I should be coming in here to tell you I've got two books left of my February TBR to read and we're going to spend the next few days reading that because we've got what four or five days left of March? No, left of February. The thing is I just don't want to read them. I, I really don't want to read those two books. I've kept putting them off all month and I'm just not in the mood for it. So instead I am going to be nice to myself and just start the March TBR early because that is what I'm really feeling. Plus, some of those books are quite chunky, so it would be good to get a head start with my March TBR, so that is just what we're gonna do this week. So, we're starting March early. I don't know which book I wanna read though. I've got two that I want to read that I wanna start. So I've got some chunky books on my TBR this month. I want to start with one of the bigger books, but I don't know which one I'm in the mood for as of right now. So it's my day off today. I've got another two days off work and I'm just thinking today I would like to start a chunky book. I really wanna take a bit of time this evening to start a chunky book, or have a cup of tea, you know, chill out, read. That is what I'm really feeling. But I don't know which one I'm in the mood for because I really want to read both. So I'm going to talk to you about both of them and we're just going to see where my mood takes me this evening. So first of all, we have More Do and this is by Alex Phoebe. This is the fantasy book that I picked up during my F March reset video. I don't, I've been really feeling a big chunky fantasy book so I wanted to give this one a try. This is one that I've been eyeing up constantly. I haven't heard anyone talking about and it sounds really dark and gritty and it just sounds like it's going to be a good time. That's one option. And then the other option is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. This is an Italian classic. It is a murder mystery. It's set in 1327 and we're following brother William. We go to an Italian abbey and there is lots of darker things going on. We have coded manuscripts, secret symbols, we have a labyrinth going under the abbey. So there's lots there's lots going on, is it? I don't think it's under the Abbey. I think it's just talking about an eerie labyrinth of the Abbey. I don't know if there's an actual labyrinth included or not. I'm really feeling this one because last week I, well, I say last week, last night, I literally just finished watching, watching? No. Last night I just finished reading The Clockwork Girl and I really enjoyed that. And that was set in 1750 Paris. We had some missing children going on. It was really dark and eerie. I talked about in last week's vlog, an unexpectedly great book. So I'm really feeling like reading this one because I feel like it's gonna give me those same eerie, dark, gothic vibes, which I am wanting. But I also don't know whether to give myself a break between the two because otherwise they could be quite similar what if I start comparing them? I don't know. So I'm feeling like, do I pick up more do as a break between those? Or do I just carry on with that feeling of wanting to read a slightly more gothic mystery leaning book? So that's that's the only thing that I've got to decide. As of right now, to be honest, I'm actually leaning in more towards the name of the rose, but we will see come this evening. Until then though, I've got quite a bit I want to do today. I've actually already started off with a really productive morning. So I've already tidied up my room a little. I made the chain. Finally, I've been talking about this for absolutely ages, that I have loads of pendants but no silver chain and I finally made myself a chain. I had all the materials for it. It's not proper silver but it will do for now. So I did that. I've, yeah, I've tidied and everything. I want to finish editing last week's vlog. I want to get that finished today. Hopefully I can also film my February wrap up because now that I've decided I'm just not going to read any more of February's TBR, I can actually start filming that wrap up sooner rather than later. So I might be able to do that and maybe get that edited that would be really good. I also want to do some food shopping so we've got quite a lot we need to do. The house is really quiet at the moment so I feel like it's prime time to get the filming done so I think we're going to do that next. I'm literally just going to take this stack of books which is what I read in the month of February plus two of the ones I didn't get to, take that over to my bed. We're going to film the wrap up and then maybe do the food shopping, get that done early because it's meant to rain later and it's really nice and sunny at the minute. So maybe do that, then do some editing and then decide what book I'm reading. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm really feeling both because I've been wanting to get into a big chunky fantasy book. Like I was feeling it for the whole of February. I think because February's reading was really good, but it was a lot of like light, smaller books. And I'm now really feeling like sinking my teeth into a big book. It's probably why I ended up with so many big books on my March TBR. But yeah, I'm, I'm really feeling 
in that I just don't, as I said, I just don't know whether to carry on with the darker gothic vibes or go like with mystery and all of that or whether to go for a darker fantasy because I feel like this is going to be a dark gritty fantasy whereas this is going to be dark gothic vibes. There is a slight difference in the two and maybe one of these days I'll actually sit down and explain that, maybe do a dark gritty fantasy book recommendations because I do enjoy them as books and they are slightly different to gothic lean-in books. I mean aside from the fact that we've got a fantasy world and this is more historical lean-in. Yeah I don't know I just feel like there is a slight difference in tone but you know what as I said the house is quiet this is not the time to get into a debate about the very subtle nuances between a gothic book and a gritty book and instead use the quiet and get that wrap-up filmed. So let's go and do that and I... I'm gonna catch up with you probably tomorrow morning with whatever book I picked up, my first impression. I am still rambling. I need to get that wrap up filmed while the house is quiet. So let's just, let's just go and do that. And hopefully you're in the mood for a chatty video because that is definitely what you're gonna get in that wrap up. But I've, I've got to stop talking. I've literally rambled nonsense for seven and a half minutes right now. So let's go. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Let me know what you've been up to, what you're reading. If you've read either of these two books and what you thought of them because I haven't heard people talking about these so you know it'll be interesting. Wish me luck that I can be a little bit more concise with my thoughts when it comes to the wrap up otherwise I'm going to be filming for ages and then editing me is going to hate it because we probably would have repeated ourselves about 50,000 times so I have to cut quite a bit. Anyway let's go. Morning. So I did start a book yesterday, but I also have some Animal Crossing updates I'd like to talk about. And I don't know how long I have to update because I'm meant to be meeting my partner today. We're supposed to be doing a food day in London, although it is freezing outside. I don't know what's happened. We had some really nice days that were like the start of spring. Now we're back into winter and it's horrible and cold. Who knows what's going to happen, especially because he's still asleep. So 
We'll see what today ends up being, but let's start off with the reader news. So I decided yesterday the way to determine what book I was going to be reading is to read the first paragraph of each book. Now, The Name of the Rose has me particularly intrigued because I think it's going to be really good. It starts off with this manuscript. We're being told how someone's found this manuscript and it seems to be the manuscript that tells this story. I really like that style of writing. I think it's going to be really good. The initial writing style itself was really easy to read so I think this is going to be absolutely amazing it's not the book I decided to go for because after reading that I was like oh I know I'm going to love this and then I was looking at my TBR for the month and I thought actually I've got quite a lot of fantasy and sci-fi so this would be a really nice one just to break up that reading. So this week I'm going to do fantasy, hoping that the next vlog that comes up is the sci-fi reading vlog, then we'll do this, and then we'll finish off with fantasy and a couple of other things. That's the plan, we're going to read this in the middle of the month, I think it's going to be fantastic. I'm predicting a new favourite book, but just based off that first paragraph, so yeah, high hopes for this. So instead I went for Mordu, and I am up to page 103 chapter 15 and this is weird i honestly don't know how to talk about this other than it feels like an adult fairy tale it feels a bit like lewis carroll's alice in wonderland if you've ever actually read that book then you would know it's it's really weird it feels like a dream nothing really makes sense it's nonsensical just like a dream like dreams don't have to make sense they just go from thing to thing and that is what that book feels like this also gives me those similar vibes but let me start off with the things that make sense so we're following nathan and if we look at it stripped away from all the fantasy elements we have nathan whose father is really ill he's dying of lungworm you have his mother that is selling her body to make ends meet and they live in the slums of this world and so what you can do is sell your boy children to the master and he will decide if he deems them worthy then they get to send home money each week which really helps obviously the families out so he gets bundled off to be sold to this master and the master is someone that kind of sets himself up at this like almost godlike figure that makes sense absolutely makes sense the setting of the book is really good. I really like it. I think it's really well done. It really captures the world. We're in this city, Mordu, where it is surrounded by this sea wall and the slums are the closest to the sea wall where they're constantly getting the spray of the ocean and everything against it everything's wet and damp and muddy and you really get that feel like it is done really well so i think that's also really good the part where it starts getting really weird is the magic system because it doesn't make sense you have a glossary at the back it's actually a hundred page glossary and i read parts of it because i was like what is this and I came away more confused. So I don't know. Now, part of that does make sense because we're following Nathan. Nathan doesn't understand magic. He knows he has it, but he's also been drilled into his whole life. This is bad. Do not use this spark. You are not allowed to use it. He gets what he calls an itch, where it's like bursting at the seams of his skin, really wanting to be used. And he just feels this horrible itching. And so he uses it and he uses it to create these weird things that are combined with mud and different bits of refuse. Sometimes it could be mud and bones, sometimes it can be bits of litter and it comes alive, which those things you're then able to sell because people can use them for parts in making things such as making gloves. And so Nathan is able to, instead of waiting with everybody else to try and hopefully get something, he can use his spark, his magic, to force one into being so that he can get money to feed his family. The way he uses his magic he calls it as scratching the itch which again doesn't really make much sense but you know it's there it, it, I mean the glossary it just confused me with how that was explained but his magic is evolving so over these first hundred pages the magic has slowly started to evolve where he's able to start doing different things things that he's never tried forcing it to do for example one of the weird being things which are called a fluke which again don't ask me to explain it because I, I don't know um, he was made up of part rat and he saw it, he used his itch on it and it became a real rat and it was like okay cool didn't know we could do that sort of thing and the same with like there's a lot and he's able to use his itch to it sounds weird calling it an itch but it's what he calls it like his magic to break this lock like unlock the lock and it's hard and it's difficult and his body fights against it because he doesn't know what he's doing he doesn't know how to safely use his magic but also as a reader we have no idea how to safely use this magic because it's not been explained to us so again i can kind of be like okay well 
we'll hopefully we'll learn a bit more about it as Nathan learns more. Then there are just weird ways that certain characters have been described like repeatedly. So part of going to the master to be chosen, you have to go up against well, not up against, but this person comes along, he assesses the boys and decides which one of them is going to progress further to see the master, for the master to then decide, yes, he's going to take them on or not. And the way he's constantly described as having this massive nose is unreal. Like, it was made a point of literally every single paragraph is this guy's nose. And it felt like a children's story, because you know how sometimes, like, they kind of over-dramatise certain things to make it funny and stuff, but it just felt really weird. So you have this weird mashup of of a really dark setting and you know grim surroundings paired with random descriptions like this that's meant to be quite funny I don't know it just doesn't really make sense also not everybody is born as a human some people are from the mud like with those weird mud creatures where they're bits and parts but they are enough of a person again it doesn't make sense it feels like we've got a base story which makes sense like it's a typical storyline we have this kid who has lots of magic who's not meant to use it his parents are really struggling and he's trying to make ends meet he ends up falling in with this thieving crew as much as it's got that going for it it then just gets so confusing because the magic system is nonsensical and then the different descriptors that are sometimes used don't make sense either i don't know how i feel about this like i have spent almost the last 10 minutes trying to talk about this book and i still don't know how I feel like it's not bad but it's very weird and strange and I don't know if it's the sort of weird and strange that I'm enjoying and I know it's going to get more weird as we go on because I know we end up interacting with talking dog but I'm intrigued enough to continue reading and to see if it works but I also feel like this could end up being a miss for me which is a shame but yeah although one of you did tell me actually that Gavin tried to read this one and also someone else and they both ended up DNF in it and see why. So yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna probably read another 100 pages of it and then decide whether I'm gonna continue on reading it or whether I'm going to DNF it. I'm kind of disappointed because I feel like if we had just lost the ridiculousness of this and actually went full wham into the darkness of it all, this could have been really, really good. I'll probably bring this one with me to my partners depending on what we end up doing today but yes I, I think honestly out of the two Name of the Rose is going to be a fantastic new favourite book and this I had high hopes for but it's just too odd. Moving on from that we will quickly talk about Animal Crossing because obviously I love my Animal Crossing. I'm feeling like changing up my island again. I was going into this going for what I knew I wanted from the very start was academic areas. I really wanted this to be an island of study and studying all sorts of different things. So obviously studying literature and books because I love that, but also history and natural history, science, and just having lots of different study areas. So it would be a really fun, also easy way to do an island. You know, trying to get all the items and stuff is hard to do. Whereas if you do like more of a natural based with just different study areas, that's really easy to do. However, what I have always loved watching in Animal Crossing videos that other people do is seeing the whimsical islands. I love seeing the whimsy in them and I'm just thinking why don't I combine those two? I did this, uh, I wish I had a way to take a picture of it but I don't, I'll, I'll try, but I did this part of the DLC yesterday and they wanted like a fairy tale island basically and I really liked the way that came out, like it was so cute and whimsical and it doesn't make sense but it doesn't have to. I'm thinking to go back through what I've already done and add touches of whimsy here and there and just see. So that is what I'm gonna do. Probably until my partner wakes up I'm just gonna chill out on Animal Crossing. I should say to you I'm gonna read more do but it's really weird. Uh, I think I think I just need to give this another 100 pages and if from there I'm still not 100% into it then I need to decide whether I put it down. Anyway I have spoken for almost 18 minutes. It's a rather long update so let's go check in with you at some point. I don't know when.
some good news and some bad news. So let's just start off with the bad news, shall we? Since I last updated, I have DNF'd two books. The whole purpose of this weekly read and vlog was to start my March TBR early because I wasn't feeling the last couple of books of February. And that's really backfired on me because I've not enjoyed either of the two books of March's TBR that I've tried reading. So we're not off to the best start, <laughs> but let's just get straight into it. So the first book I DNF'd is Mordu, and I think you're probably expecting this. I did read a bit more. I got up to chapter 26, page 130. 37 and I did really want to continue reading this one because I really do like the setting as I've said it's really dark and gritty and the setting is exactly what I wanted from this book unfortunately I cannot get past these caricatures that have been done of certain characters it really pulls me out of the story and there was a description in here that I ended up putting on discord because I was like I just why I don't like this it's not my sort of thing like I can imagine some people may like it but it's not my sort of thing um we we've met this character he's bending over to grab something and literally the description for him bending over was when he bent the fabric of his ass stretched so tight that he looked as if two bold priests were sharing the same felt cap why is that the description you've given for someone bending over like what i i don't get it there are points in this where there's been a couple of characters which are clearly made caricatures of but it just doesn't work for me when you've got such a dark gritty setting also nathan is a, our main character is a bit of a doormat like he, he's not the most interesting character so yeah i just it's not working for me so i'm just gonna dlf because i'm not enjoying it as much as it's an easy read it's got really really short chapters and i do really like the setting it's not working for me i'm not enjoying the way this has been written and the way certain characters are portrayed it just just doesn't work for me so unfortunately this will be a dnf oh it's such a shame it really is such a shame but it is what it is then i tried to start another book which i also dnf'd so this was last night i had had a couple of days with my partner which were really fun i really enjoyed it i'd given up on more do but i decided when i got home yesterday evening i really wanted to get back into reading really wanted to read a book of my tbr so i decided to go with one of the shorter books of my march tbr so that i could read it of a morning before work and yeah that hasn't worked for me either and that is the professor by charlotte bronte and i feel a little bit gutted by this one i did like some of the descriptions in this because I like Charlotte Bronte's writing. I adore Jane Eyre and so this was going to be my first time reading something else by Charlotte Bronte. I've read works from the other Bronte sisters but not Charlotte Bronte like apart from Jane Eyre. You know I was hesitant about this one because I tried reading it once couldn't get into it so I thought you know I still wanted to read it so we're going to get into it again. Last night I got up to chapter 10 page 66 and it's okay but I'm not a massive fan of our main character. So we're following William and William the first like 60 pages we're just following him as he loses all ties to his family like it just doesn't work his brother's horrible his uncles he parts ways with so he's lost all ties to his family he needs to get some money he needs a profession he gets recommended to go to brussels and to become a teacher and so that is exactly what he does and it was interesting like i didn't mind that first bit like it's slow but classic books tend to be quite slow at the start doesn't really phase me i liked some of the descriptions and stuff i liked some of the things that were being talked about in being like just because you have a job if it's not a good job and you're just trapped and it's basically a form of slavery and you're not enjoying it what is the point of having this job I liked those questions that were being brought up i enjoyed it but then when we get to brussels william gets a little bit creepy um we have his room so he lives in this school he's going to be teaching the boys but his room has a boarded up window because that window overlooks the girls school and the garden that they go in to relax he then becomes a little bit obsessed with wanting to get the boards off this window so as he can quote watch the angels in their eden and i'm like dude that's weird that's really weird and there are a couple of sentences in here which have not aged well i mean it's a classic book so i understand it but it hasn't aged the best so you know that that was a bit like mm. And if it was just that, honestly, I probably would have continued reading because that doesn't bother me. Like, talking about it now, I'm like, I don't understand why I would have stopped reading that because I'm okay with that. Weird guys, things like that, you know what, you've got some weird books out there. But that paired with 
a lot of French in this book with no translation. Now I can read bits of French because I'm used to it from classic books where you get the odd words or the odd phrase in French. My French is rusty as hell but I can do little bits but this was full-on conversations in French and I'm not that good at French to be able to follow it and I mean it was it was a good like form paragraphs in French where they're having these conversations and while I could pick out a word here and there I couldn't follow what they were saying and there's no translation for it so I were just missing bits of the book. I do want to give this one a try still, I still want to read it but I think now that I know that's in there I can go in knowing okay we're gonna have to probably google translate what this all is to be able to continue on and read it but I've really got to be in the mood to do that because that's a lot more commitment than just being able to sit down and relax and read that's a lot more like studying or at least that's how I see it so yeah because of that French bit I mean this is not a DNF forever this is probably just a DNF for now it's probably going to sit on my shelves for a few more years it also makes me a little bit wary of reading Villette so Villette is by Charlotte Bronte and it's basically this story but not from the professor's perspective, it's from the student's perspective because in this it's about a professor falling in love with a student and Villette is seeing it from the student's perspective. So I'm now a little bit more aware of whether that's got lots of French in it and whether the edition I've got has translation in it or not. This, I don't know whether it's just this edition that doesn't have the translation or whether it just doesn't translate it full stop, but I found that unfortunately for me, it just took me out of the story. I want an easier book I can read before work. That's a DNF for now, I just wasn't feeling it. I thought that may happen with this book when it was on my TBR anyway because I tried reading it before and I knew I would really have to be in the mood for that. And I was in the mood for a classic book last night and I I did enjoy it but once we started getting to the, all the French bits that's when I was like I'm I'm not in the mood to put the effort into this so that was unfortunate so that's that's the bad news out the way is that the March TBR is not off to the best start unfortunately we've DNF two books off my March TBR which I don't think I've done that in a while so yeah this is not not the best but in the good news, I did go to the library yesterday while I was waiting to get my nails done and I got two books. One that I'm going to be reading next week for a themed weekly reading vlog which is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, a cosy sci-fi so it gives you a little bit of a hint of what next week's going to be. I mean I've spoken about it several times, it's not a secret, it's cosy sci-fi. But I also saw Crystal Sutherland's new book The Invocations. This is a book that I wanted to actually buy because I really liked their other book which was House of Hollow. Really good. I really really enjoyed it so I was very intrigued for this one and then I saw it on their shelves and I was really surprised so decided to get this one which to be honest I may just read this in the mornings. It's not on my TBR but I need to read it within three weeks to give it back so I think I'm just gonna read that. I'm gonna start this this morning and read it before I go to work and we'll just see how I get on and hopefully this is the sort of thing that I can be like yep yeah, okay I can read this and I'm back into wanting to read. I think my problem was to have a book that I was really excited about to then be so disappointed by it it just didn't work so hopefully this is gonna give me what I want and hopefully we can have a book that I enjoy. I don't know what this one is about actually should we read the back of it? ML Byrne is haunted hunted and increasingly terrified as her clients, all desperate women willing to sell a piece of their soul for a scrap of magical power, are being killed off one by one. Jude Wolf is rich as sin and as handsome as the devil, but she's also cursed. Her immortal soul is tethered to a demon and her body is decaying. She needs a solution fast. Zara Jones's sister has been murdered, but Zara has no time to grieve. She is set on revenge and on bringing her sister back from the dead. The clock is ticking. Emma, Jude and Zara's lives are now unavoidably entwined. The three damaged young women, one cursed, one hunted, one out for revenge, must track down and eliminate a brutal supernatural killer before they too become victims. Sounds really good, actually. That sounds really good. So I'm going to read that this morning and hopefully it breaks this sort of reading slump that I'm in which oh, it's always disappointing when that happens but we're gonna power through but the other good news that I have oh we've got a couple things first of all look look how cute this is I found this in a little shop in London and I absolutely loved it so I'm go got these I'm gonna do this I think I'm gonna do something around my bullet journal for April with these because it's so cute and adorable. I love that. And Animal Crossing. 
I have finally decided what I'm doing with my island. I spent yesterday and the day before that doing quite a bit of Animal Crossing because I ended up DNF in the book so I ended up just like let's just play some Animal Crossing for the evening instead and I finally have added in some of the whimsical bits to the areas I'd already finished and I really like it. I'm really pleased with it. So now I'm going with this story. Don't ask me why I have to make up stories for my islands. And yes, this is probably going to change. Give it a few more weeks and I'll probably change my mind again because I'm indecisive as hell, but I have a lot of fun doing it. But at the minute, the island has changed. Think of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, where Emily ends up in the fairy world and she is doing some studying of different fairies and so the villagers are the different fairies and the majority of the island is going to be whimsical and a fairy world but we're going to have little study areas for Emily to sit at and do her studying and observing of the fae for her various books that she's putting together. So that's the plan. I really like it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I really like the whimsy that I'm doing. So I do want to do a little bit of Animal Crossing today. I also want to have some lunch. I'm a bit obsessed with sourdough bagels so we're gonna do another one of those and I'm going to read the invocations and I'm really hoping this just kicks me out of the reading slump that I'm in. I think because all I wanted this week was a dark gritty book to read. That is really what I was in the mood for. I do blame the clockwork girl for this because I finished it last week and I really enjoyed it and I and it just reminds me how much I love that sort of dark grittier book and so I really wanted to continue that and it hasn't worked so hopefully this is going to give me that honestly I wish I had just read The Name of the Rose this week but now I feel like I want more time than just the hours before work so I want to give it a full week but anyway I'm going to stop ranting about it we're going to read this one and hopefully I can come in here tomorrow morning and say to you that was really good I'm really back into the reading mojo and it's going to be great. Two DNFs was not the way I wanted to start this week. We move on. We move on. resting right by my cat. Let me take a picture and then I can show you. She's very intrigued. <laughs> but I was honestly concerned that I was going to be coming on here to update to say that I wasn't enjoying any books, that I still hadn't found a book that I was really loving, really wanting to read. Thankfully that's not the case. So as we know I started Invocations. I'm up to chapter 6 page 66 and I'm liking this which is really good. I was a little bit concerned because I'm not loving it and yesterday when I started it I was like mm, it's okay you know it's okay. We've spent the first six chapters just looking well five because I'm up to chapter six. The first five chapters meeting our three different main characters, learning about them, learning about their backgrounds, the things that have led them to this situation because each of them is in a really bad situation and you're learning about that. It doesn't have the same feel or atmosphere that House of Hollow has, which is a bit of a shame because I really liked that book. It hasn't quite got that yet, but this book is 390 pages long, so it could be something that just develops a little bit later especially because you've got three main perspectives. So I feel like it's a little bit slower because you need to understand each of the characters and try and get that connection to them. So it's always a little bit slower at the start, I feel, when you've got multiple perspectives. That's just my opinion. But I'm pleased with this. I want to read a bit more of it. I don't think I'm going to finish it this week. So I was thinking about 
when I was going to be finishing this vlog because Saturday I am not at work. I've got the day off. I am going out book shopping with a bunch of booktubers. We did the same thing about six months ago and I had a lot of fun with it. So I'm meeting up with them again and I'm not sure with that video whether I'm going to have it as part of this weekly reading vlog or a separate video because I've also got quite a lot of books that I have hauled recently. So I'm thinking for Saturday if I get a little bit of b-roll then I can also do a another book haul video and then we'll just have that as an extra video for March and make it so that I'm all up to date books that I've acquired. That's the plan. We'll see how that goes but it does mean that I really won't be updating on Saturday and then I was thinking I'll update Sunday but I might, I'm not sure what's happening Sunday. I think that should be fine in which case I'll be finishing the vlog Sunday. We'll see. I'm not sure whether it's Sunday or Monday. I don't know what's going on because I might be with my partner. I, I don't know. Basically everything's up in the air but regardless I don't think I'm going to get this book finished that quickly. So I think probably what's going to happen is I'm probably averaging about 50 pages a day of this, although today I'm really just feeling like playing Animal Crossing and just chilling out before work. I'm actually meeting my partner for lunch so I don't have much time here and I am I really want to play Animal Crossing. <laughs> it's, it's an obsession but yeah so I don't think I'm going to get this one finished. I might get halfway through but that will be it. So I'm thinking this will go into next week but towards the end of next week because I want to prioritise the cosy sci-fi books that I want to read next week and then maybe finish this at the end if I've got a couple days spare. That's what I'm thinking, we'll see how it goes but I am liking it, I'm just not loving it just yet but it's an easy read which is perfect for mornings before work where I just need something I can quickly pick up and put down in between doing things and getting ready. That's, it's good, it's not bad at all but in better news, I started an ebook yesterday, so I downloaded it at home and then I was reading it on my lunch break at work and I am loving this book so, so much. I am up to, I think it's chapter 10 of The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chokney. This is so good. I am loving it. I was a bit apprehensive about this one because I've heard mixed reviews about this book, but I did think it was going to be something that I would like and I was going to get a physical copy. Then I saw it on Kindle for 99 pence, so I picked that one up and it's just been sat on my Kindle for a little while. But oh my god, it's so good and I'm so pleased I did save it because I really needed something to get me out of that reading funk that I was in where I just wasn't loving any of the books that I was picking up and I was really in danger of falling into a reading slump. Thankfully, this book saved me and I'm so pleased with it. But following a main character whose name we don't actually know, he is just referred to as the bridegroom and he has met his wife, Indigo, and she said to him, well, we can get married if you do not pry into my past. And he is so enamored with her that he's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. No problem, because he loves fairy tales, he loves mythology, he loves all of that, and being with Indigo feels like one of those tales. And they do spend a lot of time telling each other these different tales, acting them out, and just having that, that's their bond that they have. It's really beautiful, I'm not gonna lie, I do like it. But there is that sinister undertone to it because of Indigo's past. Who is she? What's happened to her? Because we know some things have happened, but our main character just doesn't know what. I also really like the fact that we don't know the male's name, because normally in books like this they say like Rebecca we don't know the main character's name in Rebecca and so it's normally the women that we don't know the name of and this time it's the man and I really like that I think it's been done really well we do start getting another perspective a little bit later into the book which I've just had two chapters of which is really interesting and it really lends to that more darker fairy tale feeling of the book it is a bit more sinister but I'm liking it. But it's like sinister in the feels, like the atmosphere of it, and not anything that's strictly been done on page, but you can feel it there. I adore that. I adore that in a book. So yeah, I'm I'm loving this book. It is so good. I love all the connections because Indigo and the Bridegroom, they talk and act out these different fairy tales and mythology stories, you have all those connections to many different fairy tale folklore stories and mythology and it's so good, I'm really eating it up. This is basically a book that feels like it's just been written for me because it's got all the different elements that I love and encased in this beautiful prose that is so gorgeous and so darkly gothic that I am loving it. But I can say there has been some mixed reviews. It is a very slow moving book, so it's not going to be for everyone. But I mean, as I said, you know, every single book, you're never going to get one that suits every single person. But for me, this is really working. I am adoring it. And I know that if it continues the way it's going, 
is going to be a new favourite for me. It's less than 300 pages, I think just under 300 pages. And considering I already read the first like 86 pages just yesterday, it's going to be an easy one to finish up over the next couple of days on my lunch breaks at work because I just don't want to stop reading it. I've been highlighting things on my Kindle because I've just been loving those sentences and I know this is a book that I'm just... I just love. I adore it. I'm so pleased that I finally come on here to say that I found a book that I'm enjoying. Like, it was such a miserable start to this weekly reading vlog for a vlog that I was really excited for because I was really wanting to start my March TBR early because I was so excited to then have two books back to back off that TBR that I DNF. And then a book that I got from the library that was an anticipated release for me that I have liked but I'm not loving just yet. To finally have the fourth book be a book that I'm loving, it's like a breath of fresh air. I am so relieved. But my camera battery is flashing at me, so I'm going to disappear and I will catch up with you maybe Sunday. We'll see what happens across the days, maybe before then, maybe after, who knows? But I will catch up with you soon. Honestly, I'm just so happy. I finally have a book that I'm happy with. Like, oh, it's, it's needed. It was needed. Things were getting dire. A bit of exaggeration, but it, it felt that way. Anyway, right, I need to stop talking and I'll see you later. I didn't expect to be filming this late, but it is Saturday. It is almost 10 o'clock of an evening. Everyone's still up, but the house is really quiet because I think they're all watching something. So you know what? Let's do an update because I did finish The Last Tower of the Flower Bride and oh my god, I adored it. This is a new favourite book. It is fantastic. It is everything that I want in a book with the whimsical, with the dark atmospheric feeling. I do understand why this book has been mixed, received, received mixedly. Maybe this wasn't a good idea to do an update this late because that sentence was not going to make any sense. <laughs> I was going to say, I do understand why this book received mixed reviews because this story is very, very slow and it wanders down different little paths and goes on little tangents and, you know, sometimes you're like, but hang on a minute, what's the point of this? But I loved it. I adored it. I adored everything about it. It was done so beautifully. The prose in this was just exquisite. I loved it. It was really good. I think, I mean, I want to do a all-time favourites video, which, oh my god, is ridiculously hard. I have spent months trying to curate this list because I just can't make up my mind. And I'm like, oh, it's too long and things. Like, it's a nightmare to try and get together. But Last Tale of the Flower Bride is now going on that list because fantastic. So you will be getting that video to you soon. I'm not sure when. It's going to be either April or May. One of the two months, but yeah, I, I loved it. And yeah, like I say, this is gonna be a new one on there. It was decadent and beautiful, and it had mythology and fairy tales and everything just woven through it. And like I say, it's, it's not going to be for everyone and I can really understand why and really appreciate that. But for me, this was perfect. I adored every moment of it and I am so thankful to past me for downloading this on my Kindle. It was exactly what I needed from this week because obviously as we know it's been such a rocky start. Like I've just edited up until this point and it took over half an hour to get to a book that I was really enjoying which is not good really <laughs> and I'm you know if you've made it this far thank you so much for sticking it out to the end but I think it's been worth it to find a book that I absolutely love and hopefully you know maybe you'd like it or at least this video serves as a reminder as you know what it's okay to have moments where you just aren't enjoying things that you're picking up it's just not the right moment for it and it's not a bad thing that's a normal thing and you know not to feel the pressure on that like I know I do I feel pressure of like wanting to be really happy with everything that I'm reading so I can give you all really good reviews and have that energy and everything and then that having the start of this week be really lackluster you know I don't enjoy that but anyway that was a massive tangent I'm tired why am I doing this update at 10 o'clock of an evening after a really busy day I've been out all day I got to meet up with loads of friends that all have different booktube channels I am going to be putting together a little video for it however it's not going to be like last time where it's loads of b-roll I got little bits of b-roll but it's mainly going to be a book haul I did get a few books 
from that day and also do a bit of a compilation of all the books since the last book haul video because I have acquired quite a few so I'm thinking to do that so we, that's all going to come out I don't know when that's going to come out because I've got to film the book haul part of it and edit it all and stuff but it'll just be an extra video that you'll get eventually <laughs> so hopefully in March it was really good I absolutely loved it I am so tired though because obviously I finished work on Friday at midnight then went to my partner's house and he had to be up at five for work which then disturbed me and then I then had to be up at eight anyway to walk the dog and everything before meeting everyone on time so you know I, w I was very very tired but it was such a lovely day and it was great to meet everyone and now I'm feeling weirdly energized probably because I just ate a little bit of chocolate so we're probably gonna crash shortly after this but I did while I was traveling read a bit more of The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland I am now up to chapter 16 page 183 and I am enjoying this I don't think it's going to have the same overall impact that House of Hollow had for me. I really enjoyed that book. This is a good one. I don't think I would reread it, but it is interesting. It's a good take on witches, and I really like that. It's one that's really easy to read. It's really easy to fall into. I find I don't need to pay too much attention to what's going on. I like the different ways they're incorporating demons and witches, and it really looks at how women with power have always been persecuted for one reason or another and I like that it's got like feminist undertones to it some young adult books I find can do a point like that but hammer at home as if they don't trust their readers to notice this whereas Crystal Sutherland does it a lot more subtly but it's still there so I I think it's a really good book it is a darker one it's a YA horror but it's really easy to read and I like the themes that we're looking into so I think you know this is going to be a good one to finish however tomorrow I really want to start my sci-fi reading vlog so I'm planning to do that and like I said earlier in the week I will read this one towards the end of that weekly reading vlog because two of the books I want to read for that are two shorter stories anyway so I think I will have time at the end of the week to finish this up but I'm enjoying it and it just goes to show like I like this but I can easily put it down and wait you know four or five days to go back to it and not be too bothered by that it's not a bad book by any means but it's not as good as House of Hollow not everything needs to be all-time new favourites although that wouldn't that be nice I don't know because then you could never make a list of all-time favourite books anyway I'm going on tangents and stuff I've had a lovely day I am very tired I have finished one absolutely incredible book and I am enjoying another book so you know what that's a win considering how this week started so thank you so much for watching and for bearing with me this long and you know going through the trials of me trying to find a book that I like and all my Animal Crossing tangents that I go on because I started off the week with not enjoying the books that I was reading I then focused on Animal Crossing so much more which meant I went on loads of tangents about it and I'm still going on tangents now you know what maybe filming 10 o'clock at night there's a reason why I don't do it and this is the reason but okay right let, let's just stop all the tangents thank you so much for watching please let me know if you've read Last Tale of the Flower Bride because I'd be really curious to see what you thought of that book whether you also really liked it or not let's leave a flower emoji in the comments below because that was the highlight of this reading week flower in the comments if you've managed to make it this far or you just don't know what you would like to comment but you want to let me know that you were here you can leave that in the comments below and thank you so much for watching Chin. I truly appreciate each and every single one of you that takes the time to watch these videos that puts up with all of my rambles I re it really means a lot to me I love it so much and if you have enjoyed this video please do consider giving it that thumbs up subscribing and commenting my social media links and anyone I've mentioned will always be linked below for you and I will of course catch you in the very next video